Welcome one, welcome all. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Star Citizen Alpha Bootcamp. Today, we're talking about the life and death of a spaceman. Remember, this is a companion to the Tales of Citizens podcast. If you'd like to hear us discuss the ramifications of the design outlined in this episode, head over to talesofcitizens.com or check the description. Hello everyone, I am Bridger, and today we are going to be walking you through the creation of a character in Star Citizen and the death of a character in Star Citizen. Let's start at the very beginning. I've installed Star Citizen and I'm about to create my first character. I start the game for the first time and I'm presented with a first person view of a pair of doors. This is a pair of restroom doors with one marked for men and one for women. The choice of door that I walk through determines my character's sex. Next, my character looks in the mirror of the washroom and you get to adjust his appearance. So I make some changes, decide I want this hair color and this style and I want this beard and I'm good to go. I leave the washroom, I walk out to the UEE recruitment office where I finish signing my papers. I'll get to choose my character's name and designate a beneficiary in the case of my death. This could be a son or daughter, a sibling, cousin, or someone new altogether. We'll discuss that more later in the video. Now I have a choice. I can head out into the single player campaign, Squadron 42, to earn my character's citizenship. Or I can take some basic training courses and skip Squadron 42 entirely. In this case, I will owe a small debt to the United Empire of Earth. That's the governing organization in Star Citizen. If I fail to pay off this debt in time, I will become a debtor. This is not a good situation because debtors are denied landing rights on any planet controlled by the UEE and will not enjoy protection from the United Empire of Earth police force. So once I finish the single player campaign or just jumped right into the Star Citizen universe, I go out to make my fortune. I take on missions, plot new jump points, fight pirates, smuggle goods, and generally have a blast playing the game. Unfortunately, I take a big risk which gets me into big trouble. My ship is being hit from all sides, my shields are down, my power core is about to blow. I only have a few seconds, but I manage to pull the eject lever. The pirates who beat me laugh as my ejection pod spins away into blackness. Then they turn back to picking the bones of my poor beloved ship. Now this scenario is likely to be a common one. You'll lose a fight and have to eject. Your aggressors will likely not kill your pod, as this is harshly punished when you're in UEE space. You'll be placed back on the last planet you docked on. The in-fiction reasoning here is that your distress signal attracted the attention of a passing trader who brought you back to civilization. Now in all likelihood, your ship's hull was insured and you'll get a new ship waiting for you. However, your cargo and upgrades will only be replaced if you paid extra to insure those items. So at this point, I've lost some money because I didn't insure my cargo, but I got my ship back and I get back to flying missions. Eventually, I make my way further out into the riskier, less civilized parts of space. The UEE does not own these systems nor offer protection in them. I get into another bad scrape and my ship is blown up before I can even eject. This scenario will happen, though probably not as often as the previous one. When this happens, you'll have expended one of your character's lives. Star Citizen introduces the concept of an MMO character having a certain number of lives. This allows your character to quote-unquote die multiple times before finally being put to rest. You'll start a new character with somewhere around six lives. This represents the human body's tolerance for regeneration when close to death. Medicine in the 30th century is very good, but the human body can only take so much punishment before it finally gives out. Now, you can lose a life due to having severe damage to your body, such as having an escape pod blown up, not ejecting in time, or being shot in the head during a boarding action. When your character quote-unquote dies, but you still have lives left, you'll wake up in a hospital with some visual indication of your trauma. Perhaps a cybernetic arm, or a scarred face, or maybe a metal plate on the side of your head. You'll be able to collect your new ship from the insurance company and head back into space, though with proof of your character's history visible on your avatar. When you finally do die and have no more lives left, instead of waking up in a hospital, you'll be viewing the funeral service for your character through the eyes of your designated heir. This is the beneficiary mentioned earlier when making your character. You'll be able to customize the appearance of your new character and designate a beneficiary in the case of his death. If your previous character had any specific accomplishments, they would be mentioned during the funeral and on the headstone. 
Here lies Chris, discoverer of the Orion 2 jump point, slayer of the dread pirate Roberts, and a citizen of the First Order. There will also be opportunities to regain some lives by doing specific missions or paying a lot of money to a lab performing stem cell research, for example. Now some things to note about this inheritance. Your heir will inherit most of your dead character's assets, including ships and money. There will be a small tax, because even in the future, they have estate taxes. Your heir also inherits the reputation and faction alliances from your previous character, though slightly diminished. If your previous character was a pirate, your heir will be aligned with the pirates, though not quite as much. You'll never get a clean slate, but if you did want to change your character's allegiances, this would be a good time to start. The goal of this system is to provide a feeling of history and passage of time to the game. It's not a static universe with unkillable gods in the way that EVE Online is. It also dampens the frustration of a game which does have permadeath. You won't lose your character right away, and you know when you need to be more careful because you're running out of lives. This provides a feeling of tension whenever you put your character at risk, and a subsequent feeling of satisfaction when things go well. This also means that if you're the one to finally end the life of an infamous player character, that is your achievement. Nobody else can do that. You're the one who killed them the final time that sent them to their funeral. And finally, this allows players to keep their progression going even though their character has died. And now there's a successor to carry on the family legacy, and perhaps seek revenge. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You kill my father. Prepare to die. One other thing to note, this doesn't just apply to player characters. It will also apply to NPCs. All of the major NPCs will be unique and can only be killed once. If you're the one who kills the Dread Pirate Roberts, that is your personal achievement. Nobody else in the universe will have that notch on their belt. That's not to say there will not be a successor to the Dread Pirate Roberts that comes up to fill the power vacuum in the pirate superstructure, but you're the only one who killed that specific Dread Pirate. The Star Citizen Alpha Boot Camp is a joint project of the Sound Strategy Network and the Team Legacy Gaming Community. For more information, check the links on the screen. Thanks for watching, everyone. I am Bridger, and I hope you join us next week where we'll be talking about the history of Star Citizen.